1945. That little place called Rock Island had really started to thrive. Labor Day weekend. Communities across the nation, big and small, celebrate traditions and the history of labor and life. And every year, Pioneer Village in Scott County, Iowa, brings that history back to life. It's a chance to go back in time. But beyond the fun for the families, the gun slinging in the streets, beer slinging in the saloon with Melody and her friends. Part of your job as a saloon keeper. Yes. Uh, I saw you slinging beer. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Root, root, root beer. <laughs> it's a taste of the past, like this kettle corn that Greg makes. He met his wife here. He's been perfecting his craft for more than 30 years. His kettle has been cooking even longer. Just like that. So the cast iron kettle we're using is an old large rendering kettle from back at the turn of the century, the 1900s. And uh, yeah, so they would have cooked up lard in this. We just kind of revamped it uh, for our needs. There was something else happening here. Like that corn kernel that pops to reveal something much bigger than itself. You see, it takes a village to keep the taste of time alive. In this case, a literal village. All across this country, there are adults like these folks that have committed such a big part of their lives to making sure the history of crafts and trades is passed on. You see, this was a real town. This history is here today, but once it's gone, it's gone. Um, I don't know the history of machines and what went on, but we have people that come in and say they worked at the telegraph office. That's how they went through college. Um, grandmothers are showing their grandkids what they did and how to do it. Um, hopefully they're learning something good about guns and how to, you know, make that a positive in just family time. And still here 100, 150 years later. This was an active stagecoach stop. Um, the house, the summer house and the blacksmith shop were built for a stagecoach. This is how they got through their, you know, their week. And it's something to be learned from that also. Built by people with a fire to learn and then pass their craft on to generation after generation. My name's Lou Granado, and I'm a volunteer blacksmith here at the uh, Pioneer Village. In fact, this blacksmith shop, this is the original blacksmith shop, that's the original forge location, 1860 it was built, and it was due to as a quarter mile from the crossroads of two stagecoach lines just down the west, uh, west of where we are right now. And it was critical to the stagecoach lines that they be able to re repair uh, the carriages, uh, chew the horses. They needed a place for the horses to rest. Uh, and then the growing community starting here, uh, the farm community, they needed everything basically. This, this was the Lowe's, the Home Depot, the uh, local hardware store. They made all the tools for the carpenters, they made all the equipment for the farmers, repaired, did a lot of repairs. Luke is now learning as much as he can hoping he can ignite a fire in the next generation at an early age while the iron's still hot. That's when he got the spark that ignited something in him. I've liked this since high school. I got a little taste of it in high school and I always wanted to do it. And uh, about five, six years ago, I came out here and uh, the older blacksmiths started to teach me. And uh, I just love the creative end of it. I sat behind a computer uh, for my career and I, I really like doing stuff with my hands. Yeah, and what's it like to share this with the next generation as well, the kids yes. that come to you? Yes, we'd like to show the kids and, and you know, maybe one in a hundred would be interested in later on coming out and volunteer to be a blacksmith. And we do have a, sort of an apprenticeship program where uh, new people volunteer and we teach them, that's how I learned. Uh, Bob's been here almost 40 years and he kind of, shows you a little bit and over the years uh, pick up and uh, we were just laughing that uh, when you first start out it, it, you're you think you're doing good but you're not really but uh, in time and they have a lot of patience uh, 
you, you get the knack of it. From forging metals with fired anvils to the softer touch of piecing generations of memories together gently with fabric and thread, displayed in the old church house for all to see. I'm Catherine Nall Litwino, and I am the historian, particularly the quilt historian for the Mississippi Valley Quilters Guild. I was also president of the Iowa Illinois Quilt Study Group. There's a group of us that get together and we study quilts and we try to identify the patterns and of course identify the, um, the ages of the fabrics that are used in these quilts. Um, I started this back in 79 and I'm still going. I'm one of the very last fewest of the hand piecers and hand quilters in our guild. She admits she gets quite excited about every young person that comes through the doors. A chance to talk about this part of history so important to her. Why do you think it's so important that we preserve this kind of history? Quilts are one of the very last things that is left of a woman's story. I, people coming in, they talk about how grandparents or great grandparents and grandma did this quilt and she, I can remember visiting her and seeing her quilt fame up. And it, it's something that is solid. Everything else we do is gone. The clothes we wear sometimes wear out. The food we've made gets eaten. Uh, the furniture that we worked with gets traded to somebody else. But quilts, quilts stay in the family. It's sharing history that some of us older kids didn't even know. I have it arranged sort of pre-World War I and post-World War I. On this side we have quilts that are before 1914, give, give or take. And then, um, I guess we start halfway down, is the rest of the fabrics are post. When Germany lost World War I, they had to give us their dye patents and we learned how to make beautiful pastels. And so we compare the pastels to these really muted, dark quilts that were previously made. But just across the way, Donna is sharing sewing tips, both done by hand and by antique machines. You might work one year on just putting it together in the next, next year, then you want to sew it together. But it takes a long time. Uh, that's why we have so many quilts that have not been completed. So she is here, has been for years, to answer questions guide those looking to learn or pick up where someone else has slowed or dropped off. Like so many here, celebrating the past by making sure it has a future. The family's willing to spend a day going back in time. But thanks to Peterson Plumbing and Heating and QCA Pools and Spas, two companies with a lot of history of innovation and building products made right here in the USA. This is the Heart of the Story with Gary Bativier. Please subscribe, share with a friend.